Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of iPrint 3D and today we're talking about a specific error that really only affects any cubic printers. So if you don't have an any cubic printer you can save yourself time and you can just close off this video right away. There, I just saved you at least 12 minutes. If you do have an any cubic printer and you're curious as to what I'm about to talk about, well then stay tuned because, well, hey, this may even affect people who don't have any cubic printers. I don't know. But it hasn't affected any of my other systems besides any cubic. And specifically what happens is, is when I'm working with a file, I will take the file, I will slice it, I will support it rather, I will work it up completely and then I will slice it. And through whatever magic happens between the slicing and the export of the file, something gets wrong. Um, I've tried this, I don't know, probably about 30, 40 times. And I absolutely do not like to use any other slicer. So I really don't like to talk about using any other slicer. But this is only a workaround for this particular error. And I wanted to post this because I wanted people to know how to fix this if you are suffering this issue. Because every... I don't know, six out of ten prints, my printer would stop. And this was specifically to a few different types of printers. The 4Ks, not affected. The Ultra, not affected. DLP, not affected. Um, uh, the M3 is out of commission. It's only affected the X2 and the X6KS. Those seem to be the two models that I'm seeing this issue with. And what it'll do is it'll simply take your file and it will just stop printing. And you're just going to get this white little message up on the screen that says, file corrupt, file, file corrupt, uh, print stop error. Or just print stop. And it will literally stop on the layer. Like you'll pull the build plate off and it's just going to be flat to wherever it, it it's not going to mess up your VAT. It's not going to do anything else. It's just going to stop. It's annoying because it's a waste of resin and it's a partially printed piece that honestly probably would have printed. And so, it's just a constant waste of time. So again, like I said, I made this video in an attempt to try to help people fix this issue. If you're using an AnyCubic Systems printer and you're using slicers like Lychee or other slicers other than AnyCubic Photon Workshop, you're probably going to run into this issue. And I'm surprised that no one has really put two and two together here and actually said, hey, maybe this is the way we fix it. So what you actually need to do is you need to take your file once you're done supporting and everything. And you're going to export it as an STL with all the supports attached. Like you were giving someone this file pre-supported. But make sure that you do all your islands checking and everything else. This file needs to be ready to go. Proximities, everything. Export that file out. And then you're going to want to open up your any cubic photon workshop now if you have an any cubic printer and you don't have this software installed it's relatively easy to go find you just go to anycubic.com um, and you can find a download package for the newest version of it download it install it and uh, you're good to go now I believe uh, if you do get one of their printers you should just actually find the software on the thumb drive um, and I don't know if there's a difference. Actually, there might be a difference. I think you do need the one on thumb drive because I think you need the, the free pro version, um, that they're giving you on the thumb drive. So once you take that file and install that, um, and then you'll, you'll have the, uh, the photon program that you'll need to do the next step of the process. Um, cause once you're done in uh lychee slicer and you've done your prep work and you've done your islands and you've done everything else, because honestly, I'm not, I am not recommending that you work in Photon Slicer at all. No way. Mm -mm. It is a terrible program. I don't recommend it at all. Well, what I do recommend you do is if you're having this corruption issue and your files are stopping like this and you're absolutely just breaking your head trying to figure out why, try this. Because I was about ready to send this printer back. Um, because it just, it, it could print three files in a row 
and then four files in a row would just have this issue. And that was straight out of Lychee Slicer. Um, and I don't usually export directly to the drive uh, anymore. I used to do it a lot more often where I would just write to the USB. What I will do now is I'll actually write to the drive, the hard drive itself. And then I'll manually move those files over to the USB uh, when I'm done. I find that this has actually had better uh, success ratio for non-file corruption issues. So, again, you know, if you're using a printer like the X2, um, the X6KS, um, I believe even the M5, the M5S, those series might even be affected with this issue because it's a lot of the ones that are running the newer firmware. Uh, some people say they're not true photon machines because I guess they're a newer generation of firmware that's being run on them. So the hardware and the firmware are completely different. And so there are some issues, I believe, that has arisen. And I don't know if this is a bug specifically with Lychee Slicer because I have run into a couple threads on Reddit and other locations where folks have talked about this issue with Chi2 box as well as Tango. So I think it is simply an issue of using a slicer that is not any Cubix because I guess the fight is getting so furious between these companies. They really just want you to focus on their software. So unfortunately, I think that's what it's down to. So we're going to swap over to the Photon Workshop here and I'm going to show you. It's a very stark program. When you import your STL, your fully supported STL, it's going to want to repair it, which is fine. Go ahead and let it, because I think this is part of the issue. Um, you want to make sure it's good. Also, if, if your printer, you know, obviously if you have other printers, you, you can add any, any cubic printer to this. They have them all listed. Um, so you should be good. <laughs> should, should have anything you need there. It does have access to the cloud. You can do cloud printing right from the, the application. Um, there are some nice things about it. Honestly, I just don't, I, I am only using it for this workaround. So anyway, we're going to import our file and then it's going to want to repair it. And this doesn't take very long, but pretty much like every software, they all want to do some sort of repair function. And like I said, this is the fully supported version. I didn't really want to waste time going through the support process. I just wanted to talk to you about this particular error and just, man, the fact that I've been dealing with this. Um, so if anybody else has been dealing with this issue, I hope this fixes it for you. I really do. Because it fixed it for me. And although it's a bit of a pain, it's a great workaround because now I'm able to reliably um, output files to the X2 and not have to worry about um, corruption issues. Anyway, once you get your repair done, um, like I said, you can change parameters. I have adjusted my parameters here in the fo the workshop to, uh, I, I'm not going to say mimic what I have in Light Cheese Slice. They're a little bit different because I was actually tweaking them a little bit as I was playing around with this. So these are a little different. Um, I've sped up the printer a little bit, so it's, it's a little bit faster. And you can, of course, adjust these just like you would in Lychee Slicer. It's not too different. And then you click Slice, and then it does its little progress on slicing, which is a, pretty fast. It doesn't use, give you any visual aids until it's done. And then you can move to the slicing manually yourself. Uh, and you can take a look and see what it looks like. Some people care, some people don't. And then once you're done, you can say save slice file. And that lets you put that wherever you want. This part of the process takes the longest. This can take, uh, I've seen it as long as a minute if it's a big file. And this will chunk out the file. And once that progress bar is done, this process is complete. And while this is loading, I just wanted to take a minute just to remind you guys again um, we are trying to pump out some new content, so if y'all have suggestions, if you guys have any ideas for other things that you would like to see on the channel, please leave them in the comments. 
we definitely like to hear more of what y'all think because half of the channel is powered by the thoughts of the people that are watching it. So please let me know if there's other things you want to see. Um, we're doing some more painting stuff. I, I, I releasing an, a painting -ish, uh, uh, episode as, as alongside of this one. We're trying to do double content. So we have, you know, both the content revolving around 3D printing and then the content that kind of revolves more around the creative side, the hobbying side and stuff like that. So we're trying um, to do a bit of both. So hopefully um, you guys enjoy a bit of that uh, additional content and that is cool. And if not, um, let us know what you would like to see. We would certainly love to hear more of your opinion on that. And I really appreciate that. Anyway, uh, this is almost about done. Like I said, this process can take a while. Uh, I said a minute. Jeez, I think it's gone over a minute on this one. So this essentially is the part of the process that on every other slicer, we see that visual where the slice usually goes layer to layer and you just it plays that little animation for you. So for Workshop doesn't do that. You can do it manually if you want to, um, and then it just does this loading thing. This part of the process is the actual slicing. This is where it's actually taking each render and putting them into that package um, with the slices. So this, this part of the process is the actual longest part of the process. And that is it. Once it's on there, go ahead and pop that on your USB drive, pop it in your printer, and let it rip. And hopefully that solves your problems. And anyway, uh, that's it for this episode. See you all again next week, and hope this was good. Thank you guys for watching.